waters are filthy, contaminated by sewage, storm drain runoff, pesticides, heavy metals, and a multitude of toxins. Divers report continuing health problems from contact with these waters. High bacteria levels force the closing of the Marina Public Beach for weeks. Shellfish are dying. The marina is an ecological disaster. In the next half hour, we'll hear from Los Angeles County Supervisor Dean Dana. It used to be a 10 or 15,000 gallons. You're talking millions of gallons, that, uh, or hundreds of thousands or millions of gallons of raw sewage that's coming out along our beaches. Cliff Gladstein, field representative for Assemblyman Tom Hayden. No. The county does not do a good job of monitoring pollution anywhere with, on the, along its coast. Diver Rim Fay Jr. Everything that was on the uh, docks was dead, dying, decaying. It was just falling right off. And Dorothy Green of Heal the Bay. Our public officials don't really want to know what's causing the problems because it means making others uncomfortable. We'll also find out why the city and county of Los Angeles must shoulder much of the blame for conditions in Marina Del Rey and why no cleanup is in sight. a major recreational resource in Southern California, the home to more than 6,000 boats and a public beach for 25 years. The quiet waters here accumulate alarming amounts of pollutants every day from several sources. Storm drains carry runoff from Los Angeles streets untreated directly into the marina. Bayona Creek brings more storm water and sewage from the city's overworked sanitation system. Within the marina, a toxin called tributylton or TBT, and heavy metals like copper and zinc are found in boat paint. I've been in Marina Del Rey about 20 years. And when I first moved down here, believe it or not, you could actually stand on the ends of these floats and look down in the water and see the, the mud bottom in most places. Uh, I was here before most of these floats and uh, marinas were installed. There was pilings in many cases where they'd taken them out because of the uh, the surge problem, but uh, you could still see the bottom of the marina. And over the period of the years, uh, you're lucky to see the bottom of uh, your water line anymore. Are these pollutants creating a threat to human health? Rim Fay Jr. is a diver who makes his living cleaning boat bottoms in the marina. Uh, what I did experience was the sensation that I was rolling around naked in uh, fiberglass insulation. I was uh, covered with welts from head to toe and uh, it was an, an incredibly uncomfortable feeling uh, I about the only only comfort I could get was to get out of the water get out of my suit uh, I did wear a suit so I should have had some protection uh, get out of the suit as quickly as possible and hose off and as far as the uh, appropriate health agencies uh, or any of the agencies down here that you would think would, would be doing uh, any kind of safety checks and things like that, there's no response out of them at all. They just dismiss it. Uh, I had somebody from Fish and Game come down one day, and we did a few tests on our own. I won't mention that person's name. Uh, their testing indicated an unusual high level of, of uh, let's just say general pollutants in the water and it was advised to me to stay out of the water uh, that that individual would not get in the water under any circumstances uh, what he had told me was that this is one of the worst cases of inland pollution at, or not inland but uh, 
one of the worst cases of coastal pollution that he's ever seen. When you talk to the people who work inside the marina, who dive in the marina, you realize that there are many, many problems with that water quality. I hear stories of people who um, diving, uh, cleaning boat bottoms, essentially, that's what, what they're doing. Uh, if they get one tablespoon of water in their mouths, they wind up with a terrible case of the runs. They've got to get out of there fast and find a john. Uh, the edges of their wetsuits, where their wetsuits join the rest of their skin, is always full of dermatitis problems. Um, massive eye, ear, sinus infections taking place all the time with those people. They're always sick. Uh, but yet it's a living, and some of them don't have much choice. Others who do have a choice get out of it and find another job. But these are warning signals to me that say we've got massive problems with that water quality. This is the Marina Public Beach, a waveless beach called Mother's Beach because mothers often bring their very small children here to swim and play. Following the heavy storms in Southern California in October and November of 1987, the County Health Department found dangerous levels of coliform bacteria in these waters and closed the beach. It really worries me that, that there's been reports that there's a high mercury content down here in the sand. Uh, it also worries me because I've been advised from uh, uh, people who know what kind of precautions they have to take when they're subjected to swimming in, in polluted water. Uh, I can take those kind of pre precautions. Uh, I don't think any of the parents down here realize that if their children swallows any of this water, uh, they could subject themselves to you know uh, an assortment of illnesses, viral infections and. Uh, intestinal disorders and if the parents did know that I think that they probably wouldn't bring their kid down here and let him swim. Officials of the County of Los Angeles which owns and maintains the marina insist there's little they can do to clean up the pollution. This area is a, like all harbors a, it's a tidal prison. Water comes in and water goes out and and the water level may vary six or seven feet in one day. So there's a natural flushing action through that process. But there's not much we can do in terms of pollutants entering the harbor. There's no trap or net that we can uh, set up in, uh, in pollutants which are dissolved into the water. And uh, we're fairly vulnerable. Charnas and other county officials claim the bulk of the pollution comes from city sewage flowing down Bayona Creek and emptying adjacent to the mouth of the marina. How does the sewage get into the creek? Yes, connected uh, back up there with the uh, LA City treatment plants. And uh, it appears that uh, during storms, uh, somehow the stormwater runoff gets mixed up with the sewage. We're not sure how. We've asked how that occurs because normally they're separate systems, and when that happens, uh, the city will either accidentally or as an emergency measure release treated or untreated sewage uh, because their plant at Hyperion simply can't handle all of that uh, liquid that's coming in there, including the stormwater. During storms, sewage will continue to overflow at Jackson Avenue into the creek until the city completes its expansion of the Hyperion treatment plant scheduled for 1998. Like Charnas, County Supervisor Dean Dana lays the blame for marina pollution at the city's door. No, no question about it. It's uh, the overflowing uh, of their, the, they, their system has, n has not been brought up. They've been saying they're going to do it, saying they're going to do it, and they have not expanded it. And uh, some of the articles recently that the press have, uh, under, have, have, have disconfirmed our suspicions that uh, 
stormwater is running in through the manholes, through the archaic sewer system. When the groundwater level rises, it comes right up into the sewer and is causing a massive flooding that can't possibly be um, taken care of by the uh, Jackson overflow. So uh, I, uh, this is something they're going to be working on for many years, and we're going to be keeping the heat on to see that they do something about it because it can't be tolerated. No, it, well, it doesn't surprise me that they claim that. It, it behooves them to claim that. It behooves the county to deflect responsibility and attention away from their responsibility for the storm drains um, and their responsibility for the public health. Um, it also behooves the county to focus attention on the city because the county is applying for a 301H waiver for their um, Carson um, plant, uh, where they would like to continue to dump sewage into the bay um, at a quality that's less than um, federal standards. Um, and uh, so, of course, you're going to have a situation where um, different jurisdictions are going to be pointing the finger at the other when they themselves aren't really doing the job. Now, as far as uh, that assertion goes, they're right. Once or twice a year, when the Jackson Avenue um, overflow um, um, apparatus does overflow. I totally disagree. I mean, you're, he's talking, we've already, it's already happened at least three times this year already, and it isn't like it used to be at 10 or 15,000 gallons. You're talking millions of gallons that, uh, or hundreds of thousands or millions of gallons of raw sewage that's coming out along our beaches. And if, and if, and if he doesn't think the city has some responsibility for that, uh, I disagree strongly, and I've, uh, I've, I, I, I've spoken out strongly against the city on this and will continue to do things. The point is that the city of Los Angeles has an archaic uh, uh, sewage treatment facility, and that goes right from the pe person's house right out to the sewage plant, to the Hyperion plant, which is also archaic. While this bureaucratic tongue-wagging goes on, pollutants continue to accumulate in the marina, much of it carried in by storm drains. Four storm drains empty out into Marina del Rey. Two of them flow through a flood control basin on Washington Boulevard, which is connected directly to the marina. This basin, which is also a duck pond, is filled with animal waste, bacteria, and garbage. witness these clouds in the water, a yellowish cloud, for instance, that not only caused great uh, physical discomfort to me, uh, but the following day, everything that was on the uh, docks was dead, dying, decaying. It was just falling right off. And that I, that I can't contribute to uh, any boat owner's problem or anything. That's, that's a direct cause of, of uh, this duck pond area over here and the storm drains themselves. It's the opinion of this office that, uh, that in, for many years the county has um, failed to adequately monitor, um, for instance, the health of the lifeguards, um, has failed to adequately test the quality of the waters, um, has failed to adequately post beaches, especially after rainstorms. Um, has, has failed to adequately test for toxic pollutants and other organic solvents and other hydrocarbons and chlorinated hydrocarbons in both the sediment and the water um, of, uh, of not only the marina but of elsewhere. Um, so um, we feel that the county can do 
um, a thousand percent better job in, in its function as the protector of the public health. There are scientific studies being conducted in the marina. Well, we're monitoring the harbor for many things, not just pollutants. We're, we're doing what you might call the annual checkup of the, har of the marina. We do temperature, salinity, oxygen, pH, which is acidity, uh, chemical nutrients like nitrate, nitrite, phosphate, silicate. We do benthic organisms by taking mud grabs and uh, sieving them and finding, inventorying the organisms. We do uh, fish surveys with trawls and diving and gill netting. And then we do metal analysis and pesticide analysis on the sediment once a year. Uh, that includes things like uh, uh, lead, mercury, cadmium, zinc, and DDT, uh, dieldrin, uh, PCB, all these various things. So we do many things. We've been impressed with the health of the marina considering the many environmental insults that it under, undergoes. There are storm drains, uh, people seem to be pretty obedient about dumping things overboard, but we do find evidence of, of uh, impacts from people, and we get impacts from things that are dumped into Bayona Creek uh, surreptitiously. Oil, uh, trash, like grass cuttings, yard things, and you know that fertilizers and, and pesticides such as are used in termite work are in the marina, which are entirely foreign substances for the marina owners. Well, there, there is some indication that especially uh, copper, zinc, and PCBs, which are polychlorinated biphenyls, are somewhat higher at this marina than at other marinas, and I would imagine that's mostly due to the limited circulation within the marina. The pollution that we measure with Muscle Watch would have uh, no effect upon humans. Uh, most of the pollutants are uh, exhibiting some kind of chronic toxicity, and that it's not, they're not killing off organisms, they're maybe slowing the growth or altering reproduction, and it's over a long period of time. It's not something that would affect a person if they're in the water. What about rim phase experiences? We look at the literature, and there is nothing in the literature at this point that suggests that there is any hazard to human health in the levels that are found in marinas anywhere. Now, this does not mean that in some other form, some other place, as in a factory, that it might not be toxic at the levels encountered there. If there are human health dangers in Marina del Rey, many believe the county does not want to look for them. Well, I think it's part of the whole problem that we face and that people really don't want, our public officials don't really want to know what's causing the problems because it means making others uncomfortable, stopping activities that have an economic base around them. Uh, we're now in the process of trying to develop our own study looking at that water quality problem so that we have a better scientific basis for going to the county and saying you've got to close that beach. You cannot, you know, allow young children to play in that water. Right now, we haven't put that scientific evidence together. We're sure it's there, but we just haven't put it together yet. If decisions are to be made as to restrictions to prevent public contact with as important a resource as Santa Monica Bay is to the city and county of Los Angeles, I think we have to have much more evidence than we have now. Um, but we have to have a willingness on the part of government to go out and find the evidence. And so far we have not seen that. fish in and around the marina. Opinions differ. 
I wouldn't eat croakers or any bottom fish. But I, the rest of it uh, has been deemed so far by our studies to be, be fine, just the same as uh, uh, fish at King Harbor or anywhere along the coast. I wouldn't eat anything that comes out of this marina. I mean, what little does live d down here does not live for very long in the first place. So uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say anything down here is edible uh, in, in small amounts of consumption or, or, or large. I just wouldn't eat anything, period. There is a particular journalist who has, who has taken up this cause and has collected fish from markets uh, in Southern California and have taken these fish down and, and had them dissected and had, had the pollutants in these fish monitored. And it's been discovered that the uh, levels of carcinogens in these fish are higher than the acceptable level. And these are fish being sold in markets. Um, markets, well, I better not mention any names, but um, you know, common markets where where everybody shops. Hayden has sponsored legislation mandating a study of Santa Monica Bay fish. If that study confirms environmentalist fears, Gladstein says Hayden will take further action. The people have a right to know what sort of risks they are exposing themselves to. The Southern California coast, especially the coast of Santa Monica Bay, is not clean. And that doesn't mean that if you touch the water, you're going to get cancer, or that if you stick your head below the water, you're going to get some sort of virus. Um, but it's not clean. And I, I know that those of us who are familiar with this issue and either study, um, do scientific studies, or, or attempt to decipher these studies in order to introduce uh, public policy, uh, by and large, choose not to swim in Santa Monica Bay, choose not to eat fish caught in Santa Monica Bay, because we don't feel it's worth the risk. The one move that has been made to improve conditions in Marina del Rey was taken on the state level when the legislature outlawed the toxin TBT, which was used in most boat paint. Despite the recent legislation, it will take years for TBT to completely leave the marina waters. And the county's attitude, when it comes to pollution, is that the marina is generally healthy. I think it's fairly clean. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's fairly clean. And I, you, you, you compare it with other harbors you've been in, San Diego Harbor and uh, Newport Harbor, and uh, perhaps uh, the, LA, the L.A. Harbor and Long Beach Boat Harbors, I would say it's better than those. I would say that according to uh, Dr. Sewell's reports over the last three years and uh, County Health Department's uh, regular inspections, that the marina waters have been fairly good. Uh, the two anomalies going on right now are possible effects of TBTs, which is still an unknown, but which we'll know more about after Dr. Sewell's next uh, report to come out in 88. And, uh, and the very real question of, uh, of the coliform count uh, in our basin D, one of our inner basins, which has closed the beach temporarily. Other than that, uh, I would say that the rest of the marina is probably in pretty good state of affairs. I don't believe that TBT can be termed an anomaly. It's part of the, the general misunderstanding of we have of the systemic nature of our environment. Um, you know, TBT was developed to kill algae. Um, why individuals didn't think that when this stuff spills into the water that it would kill life forms in the water um, is beyond me. Um, the, the coliform um, and the other forms of bacteria and virus that probably exist in seawater, um, probably exist in marina water, um, and especially in Marina del Rey because of its proximity to both the, the outfalls, um, the sewage spills that tend to come down Bionic Creek, and just the storm drain water which now is probably the largest single pollutant within the Los Angeles area of, uh, of our marine waters. 
um, that these aren't anomalies. They're, they're part of the, of the existing sources of pollution, sources of pollution that have existed for years and years, and will continue to pollute and contaminate the waters of the marina and of Santa Monica Bay. When will these dark waters be clear again? Not until elected officials stop pointing fingers and start working together to solve these complex problems. Thank you.